So as of this morning, and I know a, a percentage of you are uncomfortable with this, but the PGA Golf is run now by a Saudi Arabian investment fund. You, you got a problem with that? Because the biggest companies, advertisers for golf, they do business with Saudi Arabia. You got a problem with that? <laughs> There's been tournaments, European tour, with authoritarian governments. By the way, I used to work for ESPN. Do you know the first company that owned ESPN? Getty Oil. Oil business. Dealt with the Middle East. The pearl clutching. Some of you, some of you media peeps ever run a business? Not everything's perfect. It's hard. Brooks Kepka, Phil Mickelson left. They needed their stars back. I saw, I saw a headline today by a golf writer. Pro golf will never be the same. What is it other than tax exempt? What is golf? Let me describe golf for you. Augusta National, they run the Masters. The USGA runs the U.S. Open. The PGA of America runs the PGA Championship, not to be confused with the PGA. That's different than the PGA of America. The RNA Golf Club runs the British Open, and uh, the Ryder Cup is jointly run. I mean, says, this is like Bitcoin. <laughs> Who's got shares? You thought NFT was confusing. Golf is boxing with a four iron, convoluted, weirdly managed, hanky, wonky. Uh, who knows who runs this stuff? Maybe the Saudi Arabian investment firm unifies it. Alan Shipnuck, a great golf writer, talked about this yesterday, the sanctimony being lobbed by all the purists. The European PGA Tour would have gone out of business a long time ago if it was not hosting its biggest money events in Saudi Arabia, Qatar, United Arab Emirates, Turkey, China. Uh, that, that tour has stayed in business in these playing in these these places with autocratic governments and um it's always been a factor in in the sports world i mean you mentioned the epl i mean half of those teams in the english premier league are now owned by saudi arabia or other middle eastern interests and uh so it always felt a little hollow and a little sanctimonious now the tour's biggest sponsors coca-cola FedEx, Morgan Stanley, they all do business in Saudi Arabia. They have for a long time. Um, so the lines got very blurry. The Masters, the U.S. Open, get TV ratings. The British Open, hit and miss, starts too early in the morning for many of you. And the PGA Championship depends on who wins it. But I mean, it's always been a hodgepodge of management in golf. Hopefully now it can be unified. But the bigger picture is I can't keep track of some of your morals and sanctimony. So let me, let me get this straight. You don't care who makes your iPhone. You don't care who makes your sports shoes you're wearing for your kids, your sports apparel. You don't care about the apps on your smartphone. And you apparently don't care that your government has relationships as Saudi Arabia is our number two trading partner. None of that matters to you. Where you draw a line is golfers. The hell? What, what are you talking about? Even Rory McIlroy, little egg on his face today, little bit of an idealist, even he admitted this morning, golf's going to be better funded. It's going to be better. Yes, you're going to have to pay like a fee to Rory McIlroy and a Brooks Kepka and a Phil Mickelson for them to show up to your tournament and Phil Mickelson has talked about that. And Greg Norman, who was a rock star, have talked about that for 10 to 15 to 20 years. It's not a new thing. But before you start pearl clutching and telling me about your morals, TikTok from China, Twitter owned largely not just by Elon Musk, but Saudi Arabia, government's number two trading partner, sports apparel, sports shoes. You wear them, your kids wear them, your favorite team wears them. That doesn't bother you, nor does it with our government. You draw the line at golfers. Because it never bothered you that the biggest sponsors had relationships in the Middle East. That never bothered you. But the individual golfer, that is the line. Come on. Golf's probably, probably better today and better funded, certainly. 
All right, so uh, game three tonight, Nuggets and the Heat. And uh, the, the two groups in America that are just, for me, non-starters. I, I just I literally, I will not listen to anything two groups in America ever have to say. Election deniers and the NBA is rigged. There are no two bigger groups of weirdos than those groups. The elections aren't rigged, and the NBA isn't either. How do I know that? Because in the last 12 years, if Denver wins the championship, here are the NBA champs. Mavericks in a football town, Raptors in Canada, Spurs, Milwaukee Bucks, Cleveland, and maybe Denver. And oh, by the way, the Warriors' first title was in 2015. That was their first in 45 years. I remember the Rick Barry teams. I remember... uh, the Clifford Ray, Jeff Mullen. <laughs> yes, J. Max looking at me. What is he talking about? I remember that. Some of the first basketball I watched, most of you don't. They were not a big franchise. They were not a national team before Steph Curry. Okay, so you can say, what about the Warriors? What about them? They just happened to stumble upon Steph Curry. But their first championship in 2015, they were not a big brand. So if Denver wins over half the last 12 winners are non-traditional powers. No Celtics. Lakers was in the bubble. No Chicago Bulls. No New York Knicks. No Philadelphia 76ers. Listen, for the record, if you were a seedy referee or a degenerate gambler and wanted to rig basketball, you'd do college basketball because 90% of the games are not on television and nobody would know and the players are mostly college kids and they're broke. You could buy them off. But Denver and Miami are proving that excellent coaching staffs, not just the head coach, excellent coaching staffs, drafting smartly. Jokic went in the second round. Player development, demanding players are accountable, solid supporting cast, and two great playoff performers, Jimmy Butler and Jokic. These are the two best teams. And I do wonder if the two best teams are coming down to one clear reality. In the first two games, Miami has gotten an inordinate amount, a bizarre amount of what the NBA terms analytically as wide open threes. 16 in game one and 10 in game two. Game one, they couldn't hit them. Game two, they did. That is a high, a bizarrely high number of wide open threes. 26 in two games. And my guess, teams generally shoot a little better at home. If they hit them tonight and get them tonight, Miami wins tonight. And winner of game three, I think, wins wins any series about 60-65% of the time. I still think Denver is better. But the election is rigged crowd and the NBA is rigged crowd are two groups I'm just not interested whatsoever in listening to. Denver is a football city. Miami is a transient city. They don't support most sports outside of the Miami heat. The hockey team, the football team, the college teams, they don't really get universal support, annual support. These are the teams that have earned their way there. All right. It is great to have you in today. The golf stuff is, I I tell you, I don't talk a lot of golf, although I like watching the majors, but um, an investment fund uh, in Saudi Arabia now essentially runs the sport and Rory McIlroy was totally honest we're better funded it's better for the sport they were leaking oil so to speak on the PGA Tour sponsors were bailing they wanted their stars they got them back in every other entertainment business and golf is entertainment too stars drive the bus they lost Brooks Kepka. they lost Phil Mickelson be one thing if Tiger was still in his prime maybe you don't do it That golden goose is over. Tiger's not dependable. Brooks and Phil Mickelson are the two guys, along with Rory McIlroy, that get me to a TV set. Now all three are conjoined. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.